please uh, take your Bibles and turn to the book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 10. Uh, The message of this morning is about sowing righteousness. And when we think about sowing, we think about gardens, we think about flowers. There's all sorts of things that we are able to sow. When we think of something that is sown, it could be a small seed, a very small seed, and you put that seed in the ground, and you water it, or it rains, and soon it grows up to be a plant that bears fruit or bears flowers, or a gigantic tree. But it's important what you sow. There is, cor- there is a correspondence of sowing one seed to the tree or the plant or the flower that is grown. And we must, as Christians, sow righteousness in our lives. The situation that was taking place or transpiring with Hosea in his day, who lived over 2,700 years ago, Hosea prophesied 750 years before Christ, and his message to this people, the people of the ten tribes of the north, was a message of judgment. They had done something evil. They had done something wrong. They were not living a righteous life. They were not living a holy life, for the most part. They were going contrary to what God wanted them to do. And the prophet who told the people that they must change, in chapter 10, he says, Sow to yourself righteousness. And Hosea has 14 chapters in it. And the idea of what Hosea is communicating to the people, his hearers, the ten tribes of the north, he's using, God is using an illustration. Now, Hosea is a type or a symbol of Jehovah. His wife, Gomar, is a symbol or type of Israel. And Gomer was unfaithful to Hosea. But you remember, she's a type. That's horrible in and of itself. But she is a type of Israel. She represents Israel. Israel, the people, were unfaithful to Jehovah God. They were doing something they should have never done. They were worshipping false gods. They were worshipping pagan gods. They were being influenced by the world that was around them. And when we are influenced by the world around us, and we start listening to what they do, start living like they live, start behaving like they behave, then shortly we are not doing what God wants us to do. God wants us to sow righteousness. Righteousness is a very detailed, very complex doctrine. And righteousness is something that is very important for us to have. Now, there are positive aspects of righteousness and there are negative aspects of righteousness. There is something that is called self-righteousness and there is something called God's righteousness. You see, Adam, when he fell... He fell. He was a sinner. When he, when he fell, he disobeyed God. And he could do nothing whatsoever to reconcile himself with God. God had to do the reconciling. God had to be the one that would come and would die on the cross so that Adam could be reconciled. And so the righteousness of Jesus Christ could be placed upon him. The book of we turn over to the book of Titus, Titus chapter 3, the Bible says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. He says, it's, it's not by works of righteousness that's going to save us. It's what Christ did upon the cross of Calvary that will save us. And when the, when, the, when the prophet here in Hosea is talking to Israel, he tells them to sow 
to yourselves for righteousness. He wants them to understand that they have to rely upon what Jehovah God has done for them and not upon what they can do for themselves. Earlier on in the passage, in chapter, in verse 9, he reminds them, he reminds the, the Israel, the ten tribes of the north, he says, O Israel, thou hast sinned from the days of Gibeah. This is referring back to an account that took place in the book of Judges, chapters 19, 20, and 21, when Israel had done something horrible as far as one sector of Israel, one of the ten tribes, one of one of the twelve tribes of Israel had done something horrible against uh, they committed a horrible wickedness, a horrible sin. Their behavior was evil. It was wicked. And you re- remember, recall the account when we had the one prophet and his concubine, and the end result was the concubine ended up being killed and dying, and that prophet cut the concubine up in pieces and sent her pieces throughout the land of Israel. And then what was so horrifically done, there was judgment placed upon that one tribe. And all the other tribes came and they were destroyed, all but 600 men. And see, they have sinned, the Bible says in Hosea 9, from the days of Gibeah. They did those things that they wanted to do. And people today, we must stop doing what we want to do, and we must understand the importance and the need for the righteousness of Jesus Christ. The book of Romans is filled with the doctrine of righteousness. In Romans 1.16, the Bible says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to the Jew first, and also unto the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of, righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. You see, there is a segment of Israel, and there's a segment of the United States today that does not live by faith. There are, there are groups of people all around the world who are lost, who are dead in their trespasses and sin, and they are doing things in their own righteousness. Now there's a segment of Christianity, capital C Christians, born again believers, who are following the wrong direction. They're not following Jehovah, they're not following Christ. They're being misled and they're becoming carnal Christians. They're becoming like the world, just like the, the people of Israel, the ten tribes in the north, they were becoming like the people around them. They were not sowing to themselves that which was positive. They were sowing to themselves that which was negative. The law of sowing and reaping never changes. What what, what person sows, that is what he is going to reap. And God does not want us, God did not want them to reap wickedness. He wanted them to reap righteousness. Again, the only way that we can receive righteousness is by trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. That is how we receive righteousness. It's not something that we do in and of ourselves. It is something that God has done upon the cross of Calvary. We cannot obtain righteousness in and of ourselves. Our righteousness comes only through the Lord Jesus Christ. It comes by no other means but through Christ. In verse 10 of of Hosea, It is my desire that I should chastise them, and the people shall be gathered against them, and they shall bind themselves in their own furrows. See, God was judging, God had the intent to judge the people of the the ten tribes of the north because of their wickedness, because of their evil doings. He was going to judge them. Now you see, the Bible is reminding us about chastisement. You see, chastisement is something that Christians must face when they sin. When we disobey God, God is going to chasten us and punish us for what we've done wrong. We've always had, there's always hope 
In John, 1 John 1, 9, the Bible tells us, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. See, we want to have righteousness placed upon us. We want to be sowing righteousness so we can reap righteousness. Ephraim, in verse 11, Ephraim is a, as in heifer, that is taught and loveth to tread out the corn, but I passed over upon her fair neck. I will make Ephraim to ride. Judah shall plow, and Jacob shall break his clods. So whatever they're trying to do, they're not going to be successful because they are disobeying and they're working contrary to what God is saying. It's interesting that there is an illustration here with these um, these heifers that are mentioned here, and heifers are are cows that can go through the field, and there is a there is a the process of plowing the field as you have the, the kind of how the, in the olden days you'd have the, the, the cows, the, the oxen, and they would be yoked together. They would be yoked together with a yoke, so they could work together. And see, believers. We as believers, as children of God, as members of the body of Christ, we need to have an equal yoke and not an unequal yoke. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14, the, the Bible tells us, Be not unequally yoked together, with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? You see, fellowship, we have the fellowship of righteousness versus the fellowship of unrighteousness. God wants us to be sowing righteousness. He wants us to have the fellowship of, of righteousness, an equal yoke, not an unequally, unequal yoke. And so the prophet Isaiah is reminding the people that they must sow to themselves righteousness. They must sow to themselves righteous, righteousness. They can't be doing things that are, that are contrary to that. In Titus chapter 3, the Bible tells us, in verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We're reminded in Titus that we are to live these three different ways. Soberly, we're to live righteously, and we are to live godly. God expects all of us to live righteous lives. Now, we compare righteousness... We can contrast that with wrongness. See, the word righteous has the word right in it. R-I-G-H-T, the word right in it. We want, we want to do things that are righteous, not wrong. We don't want to pursue wrongness. No one likes to be wrong. But we want to make sure that we are righteous. And the standard for our righteousness is found in God's word. That is our standard for God's righteousness. In fact, a name of God is Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord, our righteousness. In Jeremiah 23, verse 6, we see uh, the verse that talks about this. We'll look at a couple of verses with Jehovah uh, Sidkenu in it. But in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 6, In his day Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. And again, in the same book, in uh, ten chapters later, Jeremiah thirty-three sixteen, in those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And, he, and this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord our righteousness. This is the title of God, Jehovah Sikenu. And because it is a title, we must think very, very, we must think very closely 
to what this word, this title of God is, Jehovah Sikainu, the Lord our righteousness. It's not somebody else's righteousness. It's not the Baal our righteousness. It's not Astaroth our righteousness. We can name all the gods of the past, of the present, and the future. It's nothing to do with their righteousness. It has to do with the Lord, Jehovah's righteousness. And this is a title. And when we are to have righteousness sown, it is not our own righteousness, it's the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. When, when Hosea was talking to those ten tribes of the north, he was telling them to sow to themselves righteousness. Why? Because he, God wanted them to reap righteousness. The way that we live each day, is it righteous living or is it wrong living? Are we living in light of what God wants us to do? Or are we living in some other way that God doesn't want us to do? Are we walking in the light? Are we walking in darkness? In Psalm 145, 17, the Bible says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Every single way of God is righteous. All of God's works are righteous. And we as Christians are to pursue that. Now there may be some that are not a Christian today that might be listening. But we must, if you're not a Christian, you have to have the righteousness of God credited to your account. You cannot work in your own righteousness. Your own good works will not save you. The Bible tells us, that our good works, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. It's the mercy of God that saves us. It's not our own righteousness that saves us. Everything that Christ has done on the cross, if you turn to him, that is what will save. It's not our own, our own righteousness that will save us. And so the prophet here, Isaiah, pardon me, the prophet Hosea, is trying to plead with the people. He's trying to plead with them to change. He's trying to illustrate to them their wickedness. You see, the ten tribes of the north during the time of Hosea's writing were on the brink of captivity. They were on the brink of, this, of the Assyrian captivity because of their continual rejection, their continual sin, against God. And God was going to punish them. And the prophet Hosea, he was delivering that message. Again, to remind us in, of the righteousness of God and what God has done for us in Second Peter, rather First Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two and verse in verse twenty four reminds us what Christ has done for us who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. See, Peter here reminds us again, we are to live unto righteousness. We're not to live unto ourselves, but to live unto righteousness. That's part of the purpose. We have the word of God in front of us. Each one of us has a Bible that's translated into our own language. A very accurate translation. And in, in the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, the Bible reminds us all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Righteousness, can, or the way we are to live righteously can be found in the Word of God. We have, to, we, have to, we have to rely upon the Holy Spirit to give us the proper illumination so that we can be able to have righteous living. It's given for, it's, given for, it's, prof, it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, in righteousness. 
And if we are to sow righteousness, we must be buried, we must be grounded in the Word of God. Now, as we were talking about how Gomer was a, Gomer was the name of the wife of Hosea, sadly, she was unfaithful to Hosea, but sadly, Israel was unfaithful to Jehovah. And the whole purpose of the book of Hosea is not to focus on the relationship with Gomer and Hosea, but it's, a, it's the focus upon the relationship between Israel and Jehovah. They were going in the wrong direction. They were doing the wrong thing, and they had to face the chastening hand of the Lord. But God, God is trying to plead with them through the prophet's pen. In verse 12, he's saying to them, Sow to yourselves righteousness... Reap a mercy. See, when someone goes out, to, we, you're very familiar with sowing and reaping, I'm sure. But you go out there, you sow your seed, you wait several months, and then you, you can reap what you've sown. When we think about reaping, when we think about the word mercy, we can contrast the word mercy with grace, but the idea of mercy is not receiving something that is deserved. Not receiving something that is deserved. Everybody, every man, woman, and child on this earth today, in this room today, any place in the world today, is worthy of death, of final death, of the second death, which means separation from God in a literal hell that burneth forever and ever. But God in His mercy, He provided salvation for us in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that His righteousness, that is Christ's righteousness, can be credited to your account if you trust in Him. We're reminded in the book of Romans, and the book of Romans is filled with righteousness, the term righteousness and different doctrine, but in Romans 5.12, the Bible tells us, Wherefore is by one man's sin entered the world and so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned Adam was that one man by his one sin death passed upon all mankind you know in the book of Galatians the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 7 and verse 9 the Bible tells us be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth of the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth of the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. The question today is, what are you sowing? God is not mocked, the scripture tells us. And if you're not sowing righteousness, if you're sowing unrighteousness, then the scripture is saying that we, you will reap, we will reap unrighteousness. We will reap whatever we sow. And God doesn't want us to sow wickedness. God does not want us to sow evil. God wants us to sow that which is righteous. He wants to sow righteousness. He wants us to reap in mercy. And it talks about in this verse, verse 12 here of Hosea, to break up the fallow ground. And when you go out in the field, and when you sow something, you can't put it on top of the hard sod. You have to break up the ground. You have to turn that soil over, so that soil is able to accept the seed that's planted into it. And see, they were very callous, Israel was. They were very hardened to what God wanted them to do. And the scripture says they need to break up their fallow ground. There may, there may be things in your life that you are facing, things in your life that you do not want to deal with, things in your life that you're do not want to submit to God's will about. God is saying to break up your fallow ground. God wants us to be 
righteous people. Righteous people. Not our own strength, righteous people, but he wants us to be righteous in his strength based upon what his word says. There is one true God and one true God alone. Society today wants to bring up all these other gods, but there's only one God. That's Jehovah Sikainu, the creator God, Jehovah Elohim. The God that created the heavens and the earth in six solar days. He is the God who is the one true God. And one of his names is the Lord, our righteousness. And it talks about in verse 12, the last part of that verse 12, till he come and rain righteousness upon you. See, rain is an important part of growing things. Rain, either the rain or water, is necessary. If it gets too dry, things cannot grow. And we're to wait. God can rain righteousness upon us. God can do wonderful things in your life. He can do wonderful things in our lives. But we have to sow righteousness. We have to understand. We have to identify what is righteous and identify what is unrighteous. There are things that we have to put on. There are things we have to put off. And God wants us to put on those things, those things which, are, which are righteous. You have plowed in wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because thou didst trust in the way in the multitude of the mighty men. See, the crowd, they were trusting in the multitude of mighty men. They were trusting in what the crowd was doing, what everybody else was doing. And yet they found themselves being so distant from God that God had to bring them into captivity, to be punished and chastened by the hand of the Assyrians. They plowed wickedness. They didn't, they, didn't sow them, they didn't sow to themselves righteousness. They plowed wickedness. And what were they going to reap? They reaped, they reaped wickedness. That's what was going to happen to them. They were going in the, in the wrong direction entirely. You know, one cannot be righteous if they stop believing what God says is absolutely true. I mean, there are so many absolutes that God has set forth in Scripture. And we must believe those absolutes. We cannot question the authority of what God is saying. We have to accept it. We have to embrace it. We have to follow that. Otherwise, we will find ourselves just like ancient Israel was over 2,700 years ago, plowing wickedness, and reaping iniquity. And where will, that, where will that leave us with our standing with God? If we plow wickedness, if we reap iniquity, that will put us out of fellowship with the Lord. God doesn't want us to be out of fellowship. He wants us to be righteous. Yes, we, we have those of us who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, we have been declared righteous. We've been justified. The blood of Christ has been applied to us. So that when God looks at us, He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But part of our daily life is sanctification, our growth, whereby we can be conformed to His image, the image of the Lord Jesus Christ on a daily basis. We don't want to be out of fellowship with God. We want to be in fellowship, in fellowship with God. You know, even, even the wicked Pharaoh in the days of Exodus, in the days of Moses, he identified that God was righteous. In Exodus 9, 27, Pharaoh said, And Pharaoh sent and called Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time, the Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Exodus 9, 27. Identifying the fact of the righteousness of God is where we must start. The holiness of God, how God is far 
more righteous. He's ultimately righteous. There is no sin within him. He's holy. He, the Bible is a thrice holy God, as we know in Isaiah and in Revelation, how the angels, how they cover their face, how they cover their feet, and they fly, and they cry out day and night, holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts. God is holy. We as individuals, we have to understand that he wants us to sow righteousness. He doesn't want us to pursue things that are wicked. He wants us to pursue things that are righteous. You know, the crowd is often wrong. They're, they're usually wrong. They're always are going the wrong way. You know, in the, the, there's, a, there's a passage in 1 Corinthians 15 that talks about sowing and reaping. You know, but the, the point is we have to pursue that which is righteous. And again, that, remember the passage of Galatians, which we mentioned before, uh, Galatians chapter 6. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. But he that soweth the Spirit shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. What is it that we want to reap? Do we want to, do we want to sow to the flesh and reap corruption of the flesh? Or do we want to sow to the Spirit and reap life everlasting of the Spirit? You know, in the, the, the Apostle, the, 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 in the, pardon me, the Epistle of James, in James chapter 3, James chapter 3, verse 18, the Bible, the Bible reminds us that about sowing and reaping, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness. See how it's supposed to be sown? It's supposed to be sown in peace. And in the book of Hebrews, we talk about righteousness as well. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, in verse 11, Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. You see, the chasing hand of the Lord should be something that should never be shunned, never be ignored. God wants us to be walking in the light as He is in the light so that we can have the proper fellowship with Him that He would like us to have. Now, because of the rebellion of, of the ten tribes in the north, in verse 14, we notice that they're going the wrong way. They're, they're, they're plowing in wickedness. They're reaping iniquity. They, they're eating the fruit of lies. In verse 14, Therefore shall tumult arise among the people, and all thy fortress shall be spoiled as Shalom, spoiled Bethbarah in the day of battle, the mother was dashed to pieces upon her children. So destruction is coming. A promise of destruction, a promise of judgment. You see, Israel, the ten tribes of the north, they failed to repent. They failed to change the direction they were going. They were continually going away from where God wanted them to go. And they failed to repent. Time and time again, God was very long-suffering with them. And now they're going to be taken shortly into captivity by the Assyrians. So shall Bethel do unto you, because your great wickedness <clears throat> in the morning shall the king of Israel utterly be cut off. Now in the book of the book of uh, Genesis, during the time of the flood of Noah, right before the time of the flood of Noah, God saw the wickedness that was upon the face of the earth. And God brought judgment upon the earth. He destroyed the earth by water. A universal flood that covered the entire earth, 15 cubits above the highest mountain peaks. And God, although he's a long-suffering God, God in his sovereignty took the ten tribes of the north about 725 years before Christ, 
into captivity into, into Assyria. And the two tribes of the south, they failed to learn the example that was trying to be taught to them. And they too had to go into captivity. About 75 years after that, in 605 B.C., for the Babylonian captivity. Now they failed. Both, these, both, the, both, both the north and the south, both the ten tribes and the two tribes, they failed what God expected them to do. God expected them to serve him, to honor him, and to do what he says. God wanted his chosen people to be righteous. Now today, we are not Israel. We are the church. Those that have been born again and saved, have been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, are part of the body of Christ. But yet God expects things of us as well. God expects us to be righteous. God wants us to sow righteousness. There are so many things that bombard our lives that want us to want to drag us away to iniquity, drag us away to unrighteousness, drag us away to sin, and break our fellowship that we have with God. So this morning, this throughout this week and maybe even this month, let's think about, let's reflect upon the necessity of sowing righteousness, of being righteous people, of asking God to do things in our lives that He wants to do. We have to take the perfect law of liberty, the Word of God. We have to continue therein, day and night, so that we must let God change us from within. We cannot be stubborn. We cannot be rebellious against what God wants us to do. We have to be in submission to God's, to God's will. And I trust that the passage from Hosea, this, particularly in verse 12, this verse 12 will remind us what God would have us to do. Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Father, we want to thank thee for the word of God. We ask that thou would allow us to have our fallow ground broken up. Use thy word to convict us, thy Holy Spirit to direct us in the path that thou would have us go. Prevent us from doing those things that are wicked and evil and contrary to thy will. We do ask that we would be able to sow righteousness to please thee in all that we do and say and think. In Jesus' name, amen.